Kansai, Kansai Collective. Collective. Back, guys. Getting better, man. Our harmonization. Yes. <laughs> the intro <laughs> is getting impeccable. We can't stop. Thank you guys for joining us for another episode of the Kansai Collective. You know who it is. It's your boy, Ace Wessenberry. And joining me always, my host, the man. Zane Johnson with the matching cup with my boy. Oh, yes, of L- course. Live Staying in Kansai, hydrated, baby. Hydrated. This is only exclusive in the Kansai, man. Can we talk <laughs> Can we talk about these cups for a minute, man? These, these cups are, the, it's... Wow, you're... R- exclusive Totoro Kansai Collective cups. Yes. You know, it's crazy, bro. I've never seen Totoro. But I hear it's a really good movie. I what's funny is the first time I actually watched Totoro because like you, I mean I I like anime. I I like manga. I like anime, and I remember like Totoro is just such like an iconic character that the first time I watched Totoro, I didn't realize that like Totoro is like a little kids movie. Okay. So I was like, I mean I wasn't like a young teenager, but I'm not. I wasn't like 19, but I was like 15, like. I'm going to go home, watch me some Totoro, man. I turn that thing on, I'm like, this is a child's movie. And you better believe I finished that whole movie. My man, Totoro. What would you give it? Uh, one out of ten, bro. Oh, one out of ten. ten? Ten being the highest. Ooh. Totoro, I mean, I, I think if you watch it when you're younger, it's all, like obviously it'll be a ten out of ten. Oh, really? Well, because, wow. I mean, it's it's a it's a great movie. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, But... I watched it like not as a kid, so I would go with a seven out of ten simply because I was past like the young adolescent. Okay, what age. can you con- compare it to as far as like uh, animations in America that I can like kind of understand? Uh well, I mean, I think you can compare Studio Ghibli or Ghibli Studio Ghibli. Sorry, don't don't kill me, Internet Studio Ghibli. Um, to me, that's that's Disney. So okay. I mean, like Totoro. I mean, mm. you can compare that to any. You know, '90s Disney flick, right? Okay. I mean, Lion okay. King, Tarzan, uh, okay, all that stuff. It's on the same level. Like, if you were to watch, you know, Tarzan as an adult, you might right. be like, "Yeah, that's a, this is cool," but like, you know, not amazing. Oh, one of my favorite Disney movies, Tarzan. All right, real yeah. quick before we get into it, favorite top three Disney movies. Favorite top three? Ooh, I yeah, don't even know. Like, yeah, wow. from childhood. Um. Yo, did you do you know that movie with the toaster? It was like My, little, the 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 Brave Little Toaster. Yeah, yes, <laughs> was that Disney? Yes, I don't think so. Maybe really? I'm not sure. Internet, help us out. Brave Little Toaster. Maybe, maybe Disney. Okay, maybe do you know Homer Bound? Homer Bound. No, Homer Bound. Okay, Is that Disney. Yes, I think, I maybe. Think I'm so. Not sure. I'm <laughs> really <laughs> Come on, man. You you chose uh, like none of the the obviously Disney ones, but give me a third. Adam's Family. Adam's Family. Is that Disney? That's the, none of those are Disney. No, none, none I'm sorry, man. Disney. I don't know which ones are Disney. It's okay. It's all right. What, what are we doing today, Zane? Well, my boy, you got this beautiful shirt. You, someone went on Thank vacation. You. I did. I am recently back in Japan. So, despite what people might think, Japan is still closed, unfortunately. However, me and Zane have wonderful visas thank you japanese government for letting us stay man i was so worried i was so worried for asa to to get back into the country but he made it man what what was that process like to get back okay so today we'll talk about the process of leaving and coming back to japan during the covid pandemic Okay. okay where did you go so i i went back and visited family um it's been you know, multiple years since I've seen family and it just, I had to go back and see him. I have a little brother who's, you know, just turned three. He's three. And when I came to Japan, he was like five months old, which was, you know, like, you know, a spud potato of a creature. And you can't, you can't really, you know, do things with a a five month old. So, but he's, he's, you know, now he's thinking, moving, talking. Mm -hmm. And I was just sick of, you know, being like, a digital presence and all right trying well to actually be in his life so i went back to the u.s i went okay. back to see my family good, good okay for a couple weeks um quite worried because i have a history of <laughs> not being in allowed to enter countries wow so that brought up a whole lot of ptsd when i was wow, coming yeah, back yeah. to japan oh. but so for those that don't know, with Japan, when COVID, as we mentioned in our COVID episode, when COVID kind of kicked off, the Japanese government's response was, we're going to shut the country. You can't come, and if you leave, you can't come back in. 
Um, this obviously pissed off the entire international community of, you know, expats or foreign residents here. Um, the Japanese government was kind of, you know, they didn't really matter what type of person you were here. If you were here a year, if you were here 30 years. So for a lot of people, it rubbed them the wrong way, right? I mean, when you have people that have been living here 30 years, obviously not Japanese, but, you know, they have a house, they have kids, they have businesses. And for the government to say, hey, if you go visit your grandmother's funeral, you can't come back. You know, that right. pissed off a lot of people. Uh, just side note, uh, Aladdin was one of my f- one of my favorites. Aladdin. I'm sorry, it just came <laughs> it came into my mind, man. I had to let that. It's let okay. At least we got it. We actually got it. that one. I know for a fact is oh, Disney. That. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, after a ton of international backlash, uh-huh. the Japanese government changed the rules in September. September, I think, where if you had a longer term visa. You could come back to the country, mm. although it wouldn't be easy. Yeah, you you have that experience, man. So um, but, you know, let's just talk about first, you know, you went back to America and you were living in Japan for years now. When's the last time did you went back home before this time? Probably about two years ago. OK, so two say. years. So you're going fresh back into America during covid time now mind uh, you during those two years you feel me there was a lot of outbreaks of like you know riots and stuff like social a lot of trouble. unrest yeah. yeah right happening in america like what was it like going back to america well obviously i mean just being back and being around friends and family was absolutely wonderful um you know i i don't I would do it again at this mm-hmm. point now that I'm okay. back okay. um and I've gotten back into the country thank you Japanese government um now that I'm back I would definitely go again um the one thing that was weird like I mean my hometown is one of those places where it's like nothing's going to change like it's always going to be the same uh, my parents have a new house it was great mom and dad love the place Ooh. um but I think the weirdest, so every time I go back to America I get the reverse culture shock right. culture shock of your own culture your homeland culture which is really odd um you know you become very used to things in japan i think the biggest one especially because we live in an urban area like just the initial shock was i was like that's a s- there's so much yard oh, everyone's got yards and wow. like property and grass i was okay, like wow, wow i forgot yeah. that like you know we're so used to like houses just being like on top of each other here in like an urban center like right, osaka right. so that was that was i forgot that that's a thing um but the weirdest thing was the like polarization of the masks. Mm, okay. Like the cool thing about being back in America was at this point, everyone I talked to, most everyone had been vaccinated halfway through their vaccination or scheduled to get vaccinated. Right. So they weren't, people weren't really worried about COVID. I mean, okay. you go out to, you know, bars or whatever, and people are like, man, I'm vaccinated. I could care less. But the weirdest part was just how people responded to wearing masks. Like here, wearing mask, you don't even think about wearing a mask. It's just like second nature, right? You put it on and and you just go about your day. But I remember at one point I was sitting with my buddy and we were just like outside late at night and it was kind of cold. And I I personally, I like masks in the winter because it keeps my face warm. So I had my mask on and, you know, about three minutes later, my buddy comes over to me and he's like, yo, man, you you okay? Right. And I was like, e- yeah, what's what's going on? He's like, well, like, you know, you're just with your homies and you got like a, a mask on, like you got a problem. Right. And I was like, oh, what? Like it right. was, but it was the weirdest thing. Like, can you imagine going up to like one of your Japanese friends and be like, yo, you got a, a, a mask? What, what are you doing, yeah, bro? Definitely. The question definitely. wouldn't even register, right? So that was kind of like a common theme throughout my whole trip was it wasn't even like COVID. I, you know, I, I didn't get into many people arguing about vaccines or any of that, but the masks trigger people like big oh, time really? trigger people. Okay. Like, you know, if you're around people, like people would, it would get offended if you, you had, had your mask, mask on uh. around them. Right. And this, to me, this speaks to the cultural difference where in Japan, it's like, right. I'm sick. I'm going to wear a right, mask right. so that you guys know that I'm sick and right, I'm being polite. Right, right. But in America, it's like, I'm going to wear a mask because I don't trust any of you people. And you you felt that, man. Like, I'm so used to wearing a mask that I would put it on all the time. And, like, you get, like, shamed for wearing a mask around close 
friends. So that was yeah. an odd experience. Like for me, yeah, um, in Japan, they wear masks before Corona even came. Like mask is a very common thing. Oh, it's thing. culture. It's Japan culture. Yeah, you know, uh, so if you're sick, anytime you'll have a mask on. Mm. Um, but for me, I never, yeah, I never put on a mask until COVID. COVID. And, um, but for Japanese people, it's very normal and natural. So people don't really. Um, Wasn't a problem. Yeah, like our government's like, pay. wear masks. And they're like, yeah, okay, sure. Right. right. I remember when I was teaching, one of the, I, I had a fellow teacher ask our boss, like, should I wear a mask in the winter? And he's like, oh, actually, like, our students have said that seeing foreigners wear masks is kind of weird and scary. Oh, really? And oh. I kind of felt the same thing. Like, being back, like, seeing a bunch of, like, you know, non Japanese or Asian people wearing masks was because I the weirdest part is that my whole pandemic experience is in right, Japan right, right, where masks right. are common. So okay. seeing, you know, such a diverse array of people wearing masks was like, oh, this is kind of weird. In Japan, too, we all have the white masks, okay. but in America, man, it's uh, like, let me bedazzle okay. your mask. Everyone's wow. got that Gucci mask. Uh, like it was <laughs> it was crazy. But OK, so, so going to America. Yeah. How was yeah? Well, how was the the trip? Like, what did you have to okay. do to get into America? You had so to take those. COVID step tests? one, you need a negative COVID test. Okay. We couldn't get on the plane without a negative COVID test. Um, the process here in Japan was actually pretty smooth. There's companies where you can they'll mail you an at home right. COVID test. You video chat with a doctor. Wow. You spit in this little cup. Okay. And they're like, all right, put it in a box and mail it to us. And then the next day they email you right. your results. Right. So. The timing of that was really simple. You know, I just set it up so that it's within the... Because th- you have to do it within three days of boarding right. the flight. You can't okay. be past that. Um, they're expensive. It was To me, it's kind of scamish because it's like... Scammy. A little bit. I mean, you go online, you're like trying to find what to do. And like you can get a COVID test for $30 or $200 or $500. Mm. Like capitalism scammy, is just scammy. gripping the, the yeah. COVID tests. Um <laughs> I but this one scams. <laughs> smells like capitalism. Yeah. Um, so, but it's like you need the COVID test, but you also need a specific doctor signed form. Wow. And they charge you like an extra hundred dollars for literally like writing your name and passport number on a piece of paper and signing it. So it is what it is. You can't really <laughs> capitalism. You can't really get around it. Um, so but the the annoying part going was there's such like a you know there's so much information on the internet you you don't know what's okay. legit right right got the covid test go to my flight um you know and for sure they asked for that immediately they're wow. like where's your covid test you know, give them that but once you gave them that you gave them your boarding ticket and it was good to go my how, flight yeah how many people were on there 20 out of 300 wow and i got drunk Oh, you got drunk? Super drunk on the flight. Shout out United. Shout out United. You guys hooked me you up. Took care of my boy. I owe y'all. Well, the when y'all best, come to the Japan, best part I got was, you. So I, get, I get on the flight and I'm starving. Like I had to fly Osaka to Tokyo, transfer Tokyo out to LA. I get on the flight and like they give you two meals on those long flights. And I just destroy the first gobble, meal. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Yeah, gone. <laughs> Stewardess comes up and she's like, oh, wow, that was you. You ate that really fast you must be hungry do you want another and i was like mm, yes cool gives me another same thing smash the meal super super quick and she comes up to me and she's like hey listen we've got a festival's worth of food stocked on this flight and only mm. 20 people on board wow. let me know if you want anything to eat at yeah. any point so this whole flight, dude, they're just feeding me like IPAs and like in-flight meals. It was, it was wonderful. Very good time. Kids, be responsible. No drinking in, on the plane, okay? But if you are on a ten-hour flight and you want to sleep for half of it, I highly recommend you get drunk. Mm-hmm. That helps. <laughs> um, but it was cool. You get the whole row to yourself. You know, there's Ooh, no people right. around you. Wow. So that was great. The flight to t- uh, to LA was, you know, just blink of an eye was over with. I land in LA, and this is where it got confusing, is so much of the internet's like, oh, you got to get tested when you get to America, and da 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 I'm like, okay, probably. Land in LA, drag my bag through the terminals, and I get to the, the like the transfer terminal where I need to go, and I talk to the lady at the counter, I'm like, uh, hi, where do I get my COVID test? 
And she just starts laughing at me. Mm. She's like, <laughs> we're not COVID testing people. Go line up. And I was just like, oh, okay, sure enough. Da, 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 da. Um, so you didn't need anything. You get to America, no quarantine, no COVID test, nothing. Get on the flight, LA, back to the East Coast. And this flight is just slammed with people. Oh, I mean, really? oh my God, man. Every They apparently had to turn away two people because they overbooked the flight. Wow. I mean, you. I went from like having my own row mm. and like you know napping to just like the person next to me like asleep on me. There's an old guy behind me just like coughing. And in that moment, I was like, "This is this is how I die. This is oh. <laughs> this, this is the end. I'm gonna get COVID or something's gonna happen." Um, so the flight in America sucked. That wasn't fun. Yeah. But okay, got me to where I need to go. Okay. Um, how was the how was the food, man? Um, you know, was there any differences? America? Yeah, as far oh, as of course, man. What what did on. you miss? What did you miss from America that you ate when you Buffalo got wings. Oh. Buffalo <laughs> wings, dude. I probably <laughs> ate buffalo wings <laughs> like I I was back about 3 weeks and I had buffalo wings I think like 9 times. Wow. It was I cuz you can't get them out here. Okay. It's just not you yeah, can't get ranch, definitely. you can't get wings. Oh, wow. Ranch dressing. There's no ranch dressing That's in Japan. True. Any, you know, Japanese capitalist out yeah. there, bro, bring us the ranch. Ranch dressing is necessary here. Ranch, but, yeah. Root so beer. Root beer. I'm not a root beer fan. Yeah. Root beer. Underrated or overrated. Not a fan. Overrated. Overrated. We'll mm. say that. We'll say that. Um, but yeah, so wings, um, standard American food, cheap pizza. Okay. Just just tons of crappy food that I can't get out here without spending like Do you think your like taste palette has changed though? Like No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. No. Because I think like Japanese use certain type of seasonings and then America or like no seasonings. Oh, no seasonings. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese food is just, like the most unseasoned. No, it's to me, I mean I I've always like had a, like a pretty wide palate. So okay. not, not nothing's changed. I mean you you get used to like the portion sizes here are smaller obviously, but no, I mean, I, I enjoyed eating back there for sure. So, trip came and went faster than I imagined. Um, and then I had to come. Were you crying when you, when you, when you left? Actually, there was no tears because it was replaced with pure terror. <laughs> because, Kansai Collective fan, 36 hours before my flight <laughs> home, I lost my wallet. And in no, my wallet no was good. all of my Japanese no documentation. good. Did you guys catch the episode on what you need when you come to Japan, man? This man lost Everything. all of those things. All gone. And Not my stamps. My stamps are here. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't bring the stamps. But, but oh, that's documents, true. bank oh cards, residency card. Ev- like literally everything and it wasn't even like I lost it like and had days to look for it. I was like packing for my flight and was like where's my wallet? And that just set off like well, my whole family like 12 hours of panic. Man, and you know he tell he's telling me all this and I'm just like, yo, I already know what you gotta go through. That means Dude. long hours at the office filling yeah. out applications Documents. Even though they probably they already have documentation of they could just print it, give yeah. me another one. Oh, yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. But I lost everything. So <laughs> it actually, I mean, in looking back, like I didn't have any like you know sad, sad tear, tear. Mm. Of course, I was sad, but like it, I was just shook. Like I was so yeah, worried, right. especially with my you know history and of traveling to countries. I was oh, like, dude, man. I'm going to get stuck in America, and this is going to suck. That's um, what I was scared of. Called the embassy. First embassy person was like, I don't know what to do. And mm. I was like, oh, that's excellent. Called a second embassy person, and they were like, do you have your passport? And I was like, yeah. And they are like, you're fine. Oh, I was like, okay. Okay, interesting. We'll see how this goes. So sure enough, when you leave Japan, they stamp. Right essentially a document saying like you have a visa and you're allowed to come back in and give it a nice official Japanese stamp. Right. So I had that and I was like, Oh dear Lord, please allow this stamp to work. So, you know, I'm in the LAX terminal. I give the, uh, the ticket counter woman immediately, you know, I give her my boarding stuff. She's like, where's your residency card? And I was like, I don't know. I lost it. <laughs> and she's just like, Hmm sorry and i was like no 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 sorry no 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 look i'm 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 I'm, I'm, here's my passport this is the same one 
So she, I, I probably start like talking so fast, she doesn't know what I'm saying. But her Japanese manager comes out, starts speaking Japanese, and I can respond enough to convince her that I probably have spent some time mm-hmm. in Japan. She's like, "All right, I'm gonna, I'm give me a second, give me your passport." She goes in the back, and I think she called the embassy. I'm not oh, sure. Okay. But it was like, in reality, it was probably like eight minutes of me waiting, but it <laughs> felt like. Ah, God, a lifetime of me just sitting there, like, waiting for this woman to come out and be like, oh, yeah, sorry, you you can't go to Japan. Um, but sure enough, I she came out, and she's like, yeah, you're good to go. She's like, when you get to Japan, it might take a little bit longer, but, yeah, you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, ah, oh, sweet. Relief. Relief. Let's. But that was the first hurdle. Um, flight back, no problems. Landing in Japan was really annoying for sure um japan has their whole covid response has just been so bungled but they've turned the entire like international's arrival section of haneda airport in tokyo into this giant covid wow like yeah. hazmat wow. section yeah super efficient nonetheless yeah, i mean yeah. you get down there's arrows on the floor okay. then you go over here okay. you go over this way sign this okay. go over here take your covid Dang. test but it added, I think we, I landed and it took t- almost three hours of like, once I got off the plane to sign the documents, do the COVID test, you have to wait for the COVID result. Wow. And yeah. then they install like three location tracking apps um. on your phone. Oh yeah. You can't break quarantine. A lot of my Japanese friends kind of laughed at it. They're like, yeah, it's not really that important. But for, like, Japanese people, the consequence is, like, your name gets put on a list. And, like, they're like, oh, mm-hmm. bad. But for foreigners, it says, like, you sign, like, eight things. That just says, like, eight times. Like, if you break Dang. quarantine, we will take your visa. Oh, yeah, you don't want that. So I did the whole quarantine <laughs> thing, man. I mean, just like, yeah, it was no joke. And as much as I wanted to, didn't break quarantine. The is that really? why? Is that why you have that uh, thing on your chin? What is that? What do you call? Oh, those? this. Uh, yes. Well, in our previous episode, I said I couldn't grow a beard, but I lied to you guys. <laughs> I just grow a horrible beard. So this is my crappy quarantine beard. I'm trying out. If you guys think that Asa should keep his beard, man, write in the comments. Keep keep his beard. If you don't think so, keep man, it, let us shave know. Shave it. Let me know. I'm not too sure. I just got a little He'll lazy. grow it as long as <laughs> as long as you guys say so. So bad. I've never tried in my life. We'll see what happens. Um, but the this really frustrated me. I, I you know, I'm not When I was younger, I definitely had a bit of a problem with authority, but Ooh. As an adult, I, I'm not, I'm less, I'm like, ah, eh, you know, it's it's not worth my stress. But I got really frustrated with the arrival process at the airport because, like, you go through all this stuff. You know, I've had three negative COVID tests mm. in, like, a two-week span. Two of them within, like, you know, three days. I get off the plane, get COVID tested. It's negative. And they're like, all right, you're negative. You can't ride any public transit. You can't. You know, you cannot do yeah. anything. So to me, I'm just like, well, what? Why did I just go through the COVID test if I, you know, you know, I'm negative? Why? Right. How am I more dangerous than the millions of people that have never been COVID tested walking mm. around? Yeah, Didn't make any sense point. to me. So I was really frustrated um, getting from Tokyo to Osaka without public transit is not fun. Damn. So big shout out to my man that helped me. Yeah. came in clutch um so yeah it was it was an annoying process i was talking to a buddy about me and i'm you know i'm complaining like why why the covid test why can't i travel and he's like you have to understand it's about signaling so realistically speaking the japanese government doesn't want people coming to japan uh, right now okay. of course okay you can i mean honestly speaking if you have a visa you can leave and you can come back i mean there's it's it's possible i just did it um, the government doesn't want that to be common right, knowledge right, 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 and right, right, right. they don't want you to travel. Mm. So they're going to make it as inconvenient wow, as yeah. possible. So it's really not about if you're, you know, negative. The, the whole thing, in my opinion, is they're trying to discourage travel and wow, if they can make it, yeah. if they can make it as inconvenient as right. possible, less people are going to travel. 
right? Sure. And they can make things very inconvenient, man. I'm telling you, you, you don't, yeah, you don't want to get caught up in a process that where you have to sign papers. Never and, ending. Yeah, Never it's ending. no good, man. So, yeah, so the quarantine was like, your phone's tracked. They get a hold of you like twice a day. You have to like check really? in your location. Damn. But it's just like you press a button on your okay. phone and it just like sends your location. Okay. So wow. it wasn't that bad. Thankfully, I work from home. So yeah. I just, you know, got a lot of stuff done, chilled, and wasn't that big of a deal, to be honest. But now I like, I mean, I know I can travel. So yeah. uh, maybe I'll travel a little bit more. As long as you're, you know, being safe and not spreading COVID, don't be one of those people out there. Don't spread COVID. If you got sick, man, stay home. But if you're not sick and you got a bunch of negative COVID tests, right? Like, I, you know, people would, you know, oh, you can't do this. I'm like, have you been COVID tested? Oh, no? Well, I've been COVID tested like nine times in the last week. So I know I'm negative. Are you negative? I'm negative. All right. So, so you're saying, though, with all that going on, you know, your your trouble going to America, you losing your wallet, coming back, mm. then having to mm. take all these COVID tests, you still would do the same thing over again. If 100%. 100%. I mean, okay. seeing family is important. And for you know, for non like for foreigners in Japan, like I love Japan absolutely. Like I mean, I mean, I was in America, and at times I'd be like, "Man, I miss right. That's Japan right now." That's like I fact. like just the the little day to day conveniences that you can't get elsewhere. But that being said, you need breaks. Japan can become very overbearing, mm -hmm. right? Especially if you disagree with the process of stuff, which at this point I'm used to, so it doesn't bother me. But if you're going years of it and right. you don't get a break, you you lose that, you know, love for Japan. And I never want to lose that love okay. for Japan. I'm very, very happy here. So it's it's nice to get a little break. And America is the type of place where I hit like two and a half, three weeks, and I'm like... All right, cool. Time to head back to right, Japan. Right. So yeah, I, w I would go back. Um, just just seeing the fam was worth it alone. But it's possible. It's it kind of is balanced. Like ticket prices are super cheap. I mean, really? I got dude. I got a round trip Tokyo to L.A. five hundred dollars. Wow. Round trip. Wow. That's cheap. My flight wow. out here. My one way flight uh -huh. to Japan when I came here was like sixteen hundred dollars. Right, yeah. so I was like, but you have to pay for the COVID tests. Yeah, and the COVID tests, the ones I got, the one in Japan was two twenty, and the one in America was like two hundred dollars. Mm. So you know, tack on, but still comes to a little bit less. Um, anyone, if you're looking to travel, unless you live in Tokyo, I would say the biggest thing you have to worry about is figuring out your travel once you get back and how you're gonna get out of the airport. Um, you could break quarantine, but I'm not supporting that. You know, don't lose your visa no. over, you know, impatience. Yeah. But that being said, I didn't, you know, I quarantined at my house. So I had to get to my house without taking public transit. If you don't get to your house, man, you got to stay in a hotel. And I wasn't trying to find out if I have to pay for a money, hotel. Money, money, money. Hotel in two, two weeks, a hotel in Tokyo? Money. Yeah, no, thank you. No, thank yeah, you. So that's, that's a lot. That was my experience coming back. Um, troublesome, of course. Really weird seeing the pandemic situation in America. But it's, again, lucky in the sense it's like, like the drama of it is gone. And now it's like every conversation you have, people aren't arguing about COVID. You know, the conversation is like, did you get the Moderna or did you get the mm -hmm. Pfizer vaccine? Mm -hmm. Like people making fun of each other for which vaccines they have. Yeah. That's, that's just America. So... All right. I would do it again, man. I would do it again, but I'm happy to be back. Happy to be joining my man Kansai Zane. Kansai Collective Bring is you guys back on, more baby. Episodes of the Kansai Collective. Again, please, you guys, don't hesitate. If you guys want Asa to keep his beard, his chin strap, we can keep it going, it's man. It's the only thing I can grow. It doesn't grow up here, man. I can only get like the N Sync early 2000s boy band chin strap. Yeah, but man. We like it. Maybe you don't like it. Let me know. Let us know what you think. Do our episodes excite you? Are they interesting? And do you want to see more? Do you want to see less? Even if you leave us some hate, that's cool, man. We take it. We figure we out what you're it. saying. love it. Bring it all and here. And we'll give you a better product. Thank you again, guys, for joining us on this episode of Kansai Collective. Kansai forever. forever. <laughs> we'll see you next ever, time. Ever. Peace.